Hello and welcome to the MHG podcast. As usual, life can be a little bit miserable, life can be a little bit dark. So through the medium of video games, we are here to bring you as much light and as much joy as possible. And joining me this week is the frosty cat. I don't know what that means to my copy punk. No. Let's call let's just call him the 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 judo master. The judo child. I don't know. It's Stu. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of that will sort of become clear when we talk about our games. So it does make sense to a certain degree. Yeah. 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 In my in my head, anyway. Yeah. I don't even know where I was going with that. The judo child. That sounds like a cheap uh, one of those cheap Chinese knockoff toys, don't it? The judo child. Uh, that's excellent. Yeah. I think we go with that. We should refilm our own. Do you remember Son of Rambo? Did you ever see that? I ha- yes, I have, but I don't really remember. I think I watched it first time and I was drunk when I watched it. Yeah. I was working yeah, in they- a video shop at the time. Yes, but it's um <laughs> oh by I can't remember who made it. But he went on to do a few other bits and my mind's gone blank. Yes. Yeah, but it's all about like acting out, you know, things that you've seen. Um you know, films that you've seen, doing your yes. own interpretation of a bit, a bit like uh oh what was it called? That Jack Be Black Kind vehicle. Rewind. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Be Kind Rewind. Spike, Spike yeah. Jones, was it? Be Kind Spike Rewind? Spike Jones, I think, yes. yes. Were both, it might be. But anyway, both of those films, definitely. Very different, but similar concepts, you know, basis, yeah. but yeah, similar concepts. But yeah, very different films, but both of them excellent. Yeah. We should, we should do yeah. that. Yeah, we should do that with Judo Child starring yeah. Donald Le Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Let's do um, it. And the Venom Vipers, I don't know, whatever, sure, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> well, on the subject of video games, uh, what have you been playing this week? Um, oh, ironically enough, seeing as we're talking about making things that already exist, I've been playing a game called Copycat. Nice. Um, yes, which is, you'll be shocked to hear this, is about a cat. Um, and again, it's one of those, how do I tell it? Because the story means everything. Uh, but basically, you play as a cat who gets adopted, ad- adopted by some old deer um, while you're at a, um, uh, what's it called? An adoption agency for cats. A shelter, that's the word. A shelter, yeah. And you, she takes you home and um, you kind of, it's, it, what's really interesting, you, it's, everything's played from the, like, like the, the, like the, uh, the cat's level so you get all these things and thoughts coming up that are from the cat and then you kind of learn um that she had a cat before you and something happened and the cat went missing um and then you're brought in um as a new adoptive cat and through various things that you hear you realize other stuff had gone on and then another major thing happens and um, this isn't really a spoiler because it's kind of like the point of the game and another cat comes in and takes your place um, because you're kind of left out you kind of find yourself like lost out on the streets um and you you find another cat and you kind of like with them and it's all about discovering life the meaning of belonging and the meaning of home and things like that and what i really really like about it when i first started playing it i actually felt i was going through these sort of emotions a cat does when you bring it home so my first thought was like oh, i don't like this woman um she seems weird um, like this old dish, she's come and got me as a cat. She's taking me home. She's talking to me. She wants me to meow. Um, oh no, she's trying to be too nice. I don't trust us. So you get all this sort of thing that I think like cats have as well. And then eventually you sort of like, oh, all right, okay. No, she's like, okay, but I'm going to wreck your place. I'm going to go through. I'm going like, to go and wreck your bathroom. I'm going to knock stuff down off the, off the shelves and everything. Um, and then sort of like a bit further goes, you start to warm to her a little bit um, instead of hiding under the cupboards. And um, you you then, you then sort of like, what's really interesting is you grow to actually like her. Something happens to her. Like you, you feel a sense of sadness for what's happened. Um, and, and that's about as far as I'm going to go with the story because I really don't want to ruin it. You've got to, discover it a lot of the games done with moving around and then you get prompts come up that you've got to follow you've got to move around this world um and it just becomes this really 
emotional journey. I think I sat there at one point and I'm playing the game, headphones in. And as I sort of like got to a point, I paused the game because I've been playing for a while. And I sort of like felt there was tears streaming down my face. It was it's one of those games that just grabs you emotionally um, and just doesn't let go. Um, and it does a brilliant job of conveying that. Um, so you obviously you get a meow button so you can make noises as the cat and you can do it like it's got some funny parts so you can like claw at the toilet bowl and stuff like that while you're indoors and it's it, it's got really funny mo uh, moments but the level of humanity and the, the, the bond between cats and and their families is, is really interesting now I don't know if this hit me because we've recently just lost one of our cats um, who passed away uh, a few weeks ago I don't know if that's why it hit me but oh my god, it was it's like it's it, it was just like an emotional brick to the face in places. Um in a way that some games can't do. Um visually it's kind of got this this it's, it's not like realistic realistic, it's got an art style to it. So again, this is one that should that should lend itself to being like looking good down the line as well. Um I just point out, like, you don't get to pick the name of your cat. Like, the cat's character's already written, so it's the cat's called Dawn. Um, and, yeah, it's um, it's just, like, where you go, what you do, and, like, the stories that are going on, everything. The emotional beats are amazing. And um, also, it's set in Australia, by the way, uh, which is very rarely you see games set in Australia um, that aren't post-apocalyptic anyway. Um, but yeah, it's set in Australia, um, and I'm, I'm kind of, I just don't want to go on about the story. I kind of do want to talk about the story, but I'm not going to. Um, it's just, yeah, play it, get it, play it, uh, soak it up. It is, it is absolutely fantastic. Wow, that sounds really good. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of, I, I played Stray, and I enjoyed Stray, but it was a very sort of simple working of the concept. It's better than um, Stray. And with Copycat, is it mechanically, is it, is it a bit more of a game? Is there a bit more to it in terms of manoeuvring the cat and things? Or is it more of a, you know, is it more about the narrative? It's a narrative. Um, so you'll get things like um, button prompts. So like there, there's an early thing where uh, like the uh, the Olive, like the, your, your adoptive owner wants to entice you um, to do things and you get options to like oh, go closer or back away and things like that. It's almost heavy rain in that way, but without the obscene, stupid button prompts. Um, right. It's literally, oh, here's your choice, A or B, um, kind of thing, which ones you want to do. It's much more of a... Um, a walking simulator, I I would argue, with a, a just a really good narrative built in. Um, so like one of the early missions, I won't I won't ruin for like it, it, you go through, you kind of like you want to you want to go and find some food and take it back to your bowl because your bowl's in a, a room that you consider safe. So you go to various different places and it teaches you how this is how you jump up or this is how you get to this is how you pick things up, um, <clears throat> and it's got like mini games in a way so one for me is like she's dangling like a cat toy in front of you and you have to press one of three buttons depending on where she places it to swipe at it and it starts off as the cat toy but then like the cat's imagination in a way takes over and instead of being a cat toy it's a fishy that you're trying to grab um and it, it's kind of, it's kind of got loads of little interesting elements but it's definitely more gone home than it is a uh, video game, video game, if that makes sense. Yeah, completely. Yeah, uh, it sounds really good. Um, definitely going to add that to the wish list, I think. Yeah, out today, as of recording, which is the 19th. So if you're listening to this, it should be out. And there is a demo as well. We should we should remind you of that. Lovely. Yeah, I'll have a go at that first. Um, so, what have you been playing? Because you've probably been playing as the villain of the piece in your game. No, no, no. I've been playing as a hero. Uh, uh, <laughs> or maybe, if you've watched the Karate Co uh, Co blah, blah, blah. Let me try that again. <laughs> yeah, if you've been uh, playing, watching the... Oh, God, I can't get it right at all. God, I just shoot myself. If you're watching Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Um, yeah, then 
the the turntables, as they say. But yes, or, I've been or as us OG say, if you've been watching How I Met Your Mother, mm, yeah. Have, did uh, you ever watch that? I have not. No. All oh, right. So there's. Oh, I won't do it. But there's a scene in there where one of the characters uh, played by. Oh my god. Uh, Sean, Neil, Neil Patrick Harris. Um, he's oh, he's assist, like this is how Cobra Kai apparently got started. He's very insistent that uh, Daniel Larusso was the villain of the piece. Yeah, and uh, he was never the Karate Kid. Um, the Karate Kid was always Johnny, and so there was a whole piece leading to that. And apparently, that's kind of how they got the idea to get together to um, start Cobra Kai, the uh, TV series. Ah, oh, as urban good. legend would have it, anyway. But anyway, tell me about your <laughs> villainous role. <laughs> yeah, so my villainous role is being as Daniel Larusso and friends in uh, the Karate Kid Street Rumble, which is a side scrolling beat 'em up or belt scroll or whatever you want to call it. Um, that has just been re- it was actually released on the twentieth, and we're recording on the nineteenth, so it's brand new and fresh for you. And well, yeah, look, at us, very... look at us bringing the hot and fresh new games. I know it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, but um, yeah, so it's a uh, it's a scrolling beat 'em up, as I say, and it's in the the vein of you know the recent Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not that one, not the rubbish one, but the really good one. And yeah, it's um, interesting. It's interesting. So. It's got a kind of pixel art kind of style, similar to, you know, Shredder's Revenge, as I was talking about, the, the TMNT game. And you walk along and you punch people in the face, you know, as you do in these games. So what is this to talk about? Well, there's a couple of little wrinkles that make it interesting. And whether that's good or not, you'll have to decide for yourselves. So the first one is that, and this is just a funny one, really, you can play as Mr. Miyagi and... If you play as Mr. Miyagi, you're walking around punching teenagers in the face for an entire game, which I just found hilarious because it is just like you you can't. The game has got to be a beat 'em up, right? Uh, You know, if you're doing it like this, it's got to be a beat 'em up. And if you're going to have stars from the films, then you're going to have to have Mr. Miyagi because, you know, he's an absolute legend. And if you combine those two things, you can have an adult beating up kids. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it never stopped me smiling. To be quite honest, it was hilarious. Um, Living out those power fantasies. Precisely, it's what you want to do in real life. Let's face it, you know. And I'm almost as old as Miyagi now, or I feel it. So you know, fair enough. Probably, you, we are probably at that age that Mr. Miyagi was in the films. Oh shh, shh. let's not go there. That's just too <laughs> painful. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, you walk along, you you beat people up. And the main difference from the sort of deviance from the norm, the sort of non-standard thing, is that you have a power bar, and what that does is it allows you to take hits without losing your life bar. Uh, Your life bar is quite small, so you can die in a few hits if you get, you know, if you don't build up your bar so that you've um, got that, buffer like a shield like in halo really think of it as the halo effect if you will um so yeah you can get whacked about a bit without it without taking any actual damage but you lose your bar and if you don't have your bar you can't do your special move um so there's a there's a bit of juggling involved to make sure that you've uh you know you, you keep building your bar up by hitting people but you also try and save your bar by not getting hit and then you can do your more powerful moves you know fair enough so that's a kind of clever conceit and you know you kind of the rest of it is you go through the game as you would expect it's got you know things set in high school things set at tournaments things set in the street itself you know as you'd expect and it recreates bits from the movies well i say movies i've only ever seen the first one it definitely does that i'm assuming it's got bits from um oh what the jaden smith one jackie chan one that one I don't think there's any of that in it. Um, there's there's some from the second and third, I think, because the the character, the the girl character from the second film, no, third film, is in it. She was in. Oh. The th- was it a, what, a girl in the third one? I don't know. I honestly don't really. Yeah, know. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. Oh God, that was. Uh, oh, what's her name? The actress. Really it was famous. Hilary Swank? Was it? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I haven't done any research or anything, but <laughs> the girl you play as, I'm not sure if it's her or whether you're playing as Daniel's girlfriend. But No, right, Karate Kid 3, sorry, Karate Kid 3 is the one with um, Terry Silver in it. 
Um, okay. And Karate Kid 4, I think, is the one with Hilary Swank. Right. Okay. So I'm yes. thinking it's got all that stuff in it. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. It's basically people walking around hitting people, little sprites. It's quite cute. Um, the, the sprites themselves are lovely. Very, very clearly influenced by the Turtles game. But that's no bad thing, because it's lovely. The backgrounds are well drawn, but they're a bit bland, I would say. There's not much that really jumps out. Music's all right. It's not bad at all. Um, and from that side, it's fun. The only kind of real... Crit- I mean, if you if you like beat-em-ups like this, it's definitely one you want to have a, a quick go on, see what you think of it, because um, it is fun. And I reckon with a group of people, you know, because you can have up to four players... I'm not sure whether that's online or not, but you, you can definitely have up to four players. So that's good. The only thing is that with that that weird way that it has the power bar, you upset the classic dynamic of area area control. Like you've you've got to like work out where you are on the screen and make sure that you're controlling who comes at you and how quickly and that you don't get overwhelmed. And if you do get overwhelmed, you use your special move to get out of it and there's a punishment for that. Uh, obviously, normally it's like you lose some life. But in this game, you can very, very quickly and very easily not have the ability to do your special move and then you can fall into the trap of, okay, well, you're just going to get battered around because your regular moves aren't powerful enough to defeat the enemies without the special. So I think the balance is a little bit off with that. I would have liked to have seen a a mode where either getting hit doesn't take that bar off you or that it does, still like Halo, but your special move isn't dependent on it. Like it's dependent on your health rather than on your special bar. Now that's getting a little bit into it, but it's really the key. It's the crux of which, you know, this pivots around being a really excellent game and being one that's a, a nice idea that hasn't quite pulled it off. So it's it's fun. It's interesting. It tries some new things, even though it, it kind of looks pretty, but a little bland. It just has a little bit of a strange effect you know, in in the way that you play it because of that mechanism they've put in it. So it's a kind of hesitant recommend from me at the moment. Mm. It might get patched. I might feed back to the devs about it a little bit. But yeah, it's definitely one to check out. Have a look at some videos, see what you think, and go from there. According to (coughs) uh, Steam and Effort, the developers, this is their only game. Uh, Publisher-wise, it's from everyone's favourite game bill. Yeah. Um, So they've got the Cobra Kai game on there. I think the half decent one. Not the. I don't know if they've got the sequel or not. I think. Oh, they got both. They probably got both. So the, the first Cobra Kai game was met okay, and the second one was god awful apparently. Um, but you know they put out Nickelodeon Kart Racers and uh, Nickelodeon All Star Brawl, uh, Walking Dead Destinies. Um, the G.I. Joe game that was really bad. Reworks Trolls. So they, they they put out a bunch of crap. And they obviously and my favourite racing game of all time, that's Car Arcade Rush. They put that out. Oh, you okay. loved that. I did, didn't I? Um but they got like for everything that's shite that they bring out, they've got the odd few decent ones. At least it sounds like it's it's gone into the developers have gone, all right, at least it's a decent one. It's not a bad game by any stretch. No, it definitely isn't, because all the mechanics work well. You know, you don't you're not there going, Oh, that hit should have landed and it didn't. You know, the 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 whole of it mechanically works exactly as designed and really well and they've got, you know, They've got the tropes in there, which is fine, but they've also got some new moves, not really in terms of how you execute them, but the way that they present on the screen is interesting and fun. So it's got stuff that's both visually good and mechanically solid. So, you know, you're in a good place from there. You know, even if it doesn't end up perfect, you've got a good basis. So, yeah, yeah, a few tweaks and it could be really, really good, I think. I think every 80s property's really got to become a belt scroller, hasn't it? Well, pretty much, yeah. Because even Bucky <laughs> O'Hare's much. decent. You ever played Bucky O'Hare in the arcade? That was good. You no, know I what never a Bucky did. O'Hare I played is. it on the SNES, I think, uh, which I think is a different game, isn't it? Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, that's it, yeah, that's difficult. But no, I liked it. Um, basically, it was the arcade one was a. Um, essentially, it was a Streets of Rage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, clone. 
uh, but it was really good with Bucky O'Hare, uh, which has a because it was the eighties an amazing theme tune. Yeah, it certainly did. Yeah, it was good on the um, it was good on the SNAS as well. It's worth yes. worth playing on. I'm still hoping, fingers crossed, we do get a uh, Jason the World Warriors belt scroller. Oh, that would be so good. Yeah, oh, imagine what you oh, could do with that. Oh God, yeah. And um, Ulysses twenty seventy one or whatever it is. Um, that'd yes. be amazing but not as a belt scroll or maybe some sort of weird trippy 3D uh, effect I don't know but also we talked about obviously copycat and you mentioned Stray earlier right where's the Littlest Hobo game come on oh yeah you've got That's so it. much you could do with the Littlest Hobo in today's world yeah yeah get that copycat engine used for the Littlest Hobo just, oh, you could do it episodic and everything. There you go. Look at that constant money coming in. Oh, so good. Endless cycle of profit. No, no, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, we'll yeah. expect to see that hitting shelves in about a year's time now. Our ideas yeah. getting stolen. Yeah. Well, if Game Mill listen to this, then they'll, they'll crank that out somehow. Oh, yeah. Too right. Um, anyway, so let's talk about Frostpunk 2. It is what well, has been probably one of my most anticipated games of the year. I think last year as well, I was really looking forward to it. I'm sure it was announced last year, but ever since it's been announced, I was like, yes, please. Uh, because the first game is, is something special. It's grim, it's dark, but somehow so full of hope. Uh, it's uh, basically a city builder where it's the first game was all about survival um, and 11 bit studios you'll know them from and they've made loads of stuff so obviously they've done the original Frostpunk Creatures of Ava which I reviewed recently Indica which is another one that came out recently Children of Malta so many good games but I think the biggest standout ones up until this date were probably as I said Frostpunk and the game that you need to be ready to play um, this war of mine. Um, they know how to do, make you feel like crap for the life you have because of the life others have to have. Um, and they've managed to do it again in Frostpunk 2. So with this, where's the first game was all about, you got a group of survivors and it is literally about, can you survive? Can you build out enough so that you can stay warm enough to survive? So everything you do is about getting your community together and making sure they can carry on. You've got to deal with little parcels of uh, of arguments and stuff like that and dealing with, like, some people want to build religion and stuff like that, but it's all about, like, no, we've got to survive. That is the most important thing. But what Frostpunk 2 does is it takes it and goes, right, we've survived... Eras have passed now, and the person who was the steward, the person who oversaw it before you, has passed, and now the torch has been passed on to you. So you need to go and find and create um, your own new district, your own new area. So you've gone out, you found the place where you could, you could again build that central. Uh, area that you build around but instead of just building around in a circle this time because that's how everything was generated in this small area everything just gets bigger so you have to go out you have to explore more and not just explore for bringing resources back or or bringing back new survivors you might come across you've actually got to go out explore find new areas and actually turn those into districts so you kind of go out and you could create a colony elsewhere. Um, and what happens is these different colonies, when they form, whether they be close to your main base, whether they be further out, they all want a hand in how the world develops beyond there. So you've got factions you've got to deal with. And um, like with like the world today, you're, you know, the people in Russia are different to how people are in the UK. So you get all these different things and you get sort of like, you might get, oh, we want more power, we want more area, we don't want these to have this. So you, you have this council and you have regular meetings and you've got to pass laws and, and things like that that, um, that will allow everyone as best as possible to get along and it doesn't always work out. 
Um, and it's you're trying to keep the peace while everyone else maybe might start warring. They might not, because every run you have with this will be different. Um, and it feels more. So it's set thirty years ish after after the first game. And what I would say with this, it's more of what you want from a sequel. I think if they had gone for not like, here's the same game again with just a couple of little bits added on, you would have gone. Well, this could have just been DLC. This has gone right. This is what a sequel should be. We've taken the core concept of the game and actually turned it into something that's more than what it was before. So in many ways, it's closer to a sieve or a or even an against the storm where yes, you've got this overall world you've got to worry about, but you've got to do it in small little pockets as well. And you've got to make sure you're maintaining all of them. Whilst again, each pocket needs to survive. Survival is still the main element of the game. But growth and long term long term um, human race survival and building it, it is important. So obviously, like humanity in the real world is an absolute mess. So how do you go about making structuring your society so you're not making the same mistakes or make things better? Like, can you control the laws and and have police forces? Like, how how does that side of it work? So yeah, pretty much that's almost like the core part of the core of the game as well so one of the things is you said like we've made many mistakes as a human race such as like how people want more land or there's more greed and there's like people could never agree on policies and because it's human nature that's in the game so you're as the overseer in a way or the steward as it's called in the frost punk world you'll get maybe two different I don't like saying warring factions because they're not like full on wars, but two, two factions with different viewpoints that will come to you and go like, we want this, we want this. Some other factions might go, well, we side with them, we side with them. Actually, we're completely different to them. And your role is to go, right, okay, this is what we're going to do. And when you make that decision, some are going to be happy with that, others aren't, but it doesn't feel like it's just a straight up binary decision doesn't feel like that it feels like there's long-term effects to what you decide to do and yeah. everything feels natural um so you might need to pass a law further into the game and all of a sudden you might not have support of some of the factions because you went against what they wanted but you've got support from these other factions because they was happy with what you did before and again it, it feels a bit spiteful uh, but in a good way um, in terms of a gameplay way, in the, yeah, do you know what? It's like it's like with your kids. If you've gone right, no, she can have a chocolate bar, you can't. And then you ask something later, you're gonna the one who gave you the um, chocolate bar to is gonna go, well, yeah, no, that's all right, Dad. And the other one's gonna go, well, blah, blah, blah. you kind of get obviously not as basic as that. Um, I'm not comparing Frostpunk two to parenting my children, honestly, honestly. Of course not. So another question would be, how does it? handle on the steam deck is it even possible to play it on steam deck so one of the things they did say was don't review it on the steam deck uh, because it's unsupported um yeah. now it runs um so on this it runs it's not best experience at the moment one because it's mouse and keyboard only and no one's come up with a a controller profile yet and i'm not clever enough to make one um but it runs and it depends on your tolerance. Um, so if you're okay with frame rate dips for into the 20s and, and stuff like that on this sort of game, yeah, do you know what? It is playable. Um, and I've, I have I done... Made sure I played most of it on uh, the PC for review purposes. Uh, but I have relaxed with it as much as you can relax with a Frostpunk game on the Steam Deck on the sofa. So it is playable. It's not ideal. Um, whether that will change down the line, who knows? The first game, I think, is very playable. Um, so hopefully it is, you know, a bit of optimization, a couple of decent uh, community profiles, and I think it will be officially unsupported, unofficially very playable. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, and uh, I guess another one that springs to mind, like a, a main one for me, I don't know if it really bothers people who are into the 
the genre, but does it have a win state? Can you actually win the game or is it like endless? Yeah, there's a story mode and that has an end point. There's a lot of lose states, that much I will say. Um, it's very easy to lose. Um, <laughs> I don't know in the utopia mode, in all fairness, uh, because I've not dug far enough into that where I've been able to get to a, a win, uh, an, end, an end winning state with that, so to speak. So I honestly can't answer that at the moment. Uh, but the story obviously has an end point. Um, obviously, I'm not going to ruin what that is. No, yeah, yeah. That sounds, uh, yeah, sounds very good. So, yeah, just to finish off, it is out now. Steam Deck unsupported, but I think playable. Um, PC only at the moment. And just as a heads up, if you've not played it, the original games are on sale for about two quid as well. So pick that up. Uh, But yeah, Frostpunk 2, um, Game of the Year decisions are getting very, very difficult this year. And I think they're going to be more difficult than they've been over the, the past five years because it's just ridiculous the games we're getting <laughs> yeah yeah it's been a very good year so yeah like so that, that's frostpunk and it's brilliant but i very nearly didn't play as much as i wanted to because i decided to try the 1.0 release of satisfactory which is a game i ignored um not ignored but like when oh, i too like my brain's not big enough for this um i started playing it in the 1.0 and over a weekend or oh, five days, I think I've put like 30 to 40 hours into it. It's ridiculous. And I'm going to be doing content on that game um, in the coming weeks because, um, yeah, you get to build factories and uh, then you unlock new stuff. And you, I've now got a truck on a road system that takes resources from um, a coal deposit to my main factory and stuff and automation. And it's just, oh my God. God, it's ADHD heaven. Um, because you just like all oh, this, you go, I'm going to start this. And then, but if it doesn't go well, you kind of go, oh, I'm just going to tear it all down. And there's no like punishment. Like everything you tear down, you get back. And it's, it's just really, 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 really good. And there's lots of new things to discover. And there's, there's trees to like unlock trees. And, um, but it's not, it's not done in this really weird way of, oh, you've got to do this unlock tree, re like discover research and then make this in research for like two hours before you can go back and do something else research takes like three seconds and there's more building and more factories and more more discovery and more travel and different biomes and you can unlock blade runner legs that make you jump higher and run faster and it's just oh my god it's so good Stu <laughs> um, yeah yeah uh, um Considering when I at the start of the year, I went, oh, Bellatro, that's a shoo-in for my game of the year. Jesus Christ. I know. How naive I was. Yeah. The agony of choice now. That's what you got. Um, people say the industry's dead. <laughs> I Far from it, thankfully. Yes. But with that, uh, because I don't want to put doom on the industry, it's time for me to shut up. Oh, no. Well, fair enough. And, like building on that in terms of what's great i've completed astrobot this week and got got the platinum and by crikey the last level the the absolute grandmaster level is absolutely rock hard i'll see if i can get the recording i talk up onto the uh onto the website of me actually finally completing it but yeah that was a, that was a challenge but it was it was lovely and it was such a good game if you haven't bought it yet i really recommend getting it if you got a ps5 but yeah no that will be it for the rest of it so yeah as usual follow all of our content make sure that you're checking out the website especially for the indie roundup every week check out the content on youtube as well join us on discord to chat and apart from that until next time stay safe and stay sane